What's up guys? We're here with Big Wheel Cody, not talking about big wheels. <laughs> How are you, dude? Oh, they're hot. <laughs> it's pretty warm out here in East Texas. It's it's toasty. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I early went to California like a week or two ago. Yeah. And going through the middle of Texas was without a doubt like the hottest part of the entire trip, even with going through like Phoenix and all that. So. Yeah. Yeah, we went through some parts of uh, Southern Nevada that was pretty brutal on our trip. So. Pretty brutal. Yeah. I guess we forgot to, to got to put the fans, fans back off. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to go with it. People will deal with some shitty audio. They're going to complain regardless. <laughs> you just guys, you guys just finished a big trip, right? Yeah, man. Uh, we left Texas. Uh, we went to the Pacific Northwest. So we went through, uh, you know, New Mexico, Monument Valley, went through Zion National Park, uh, kicked over, did a little bit of Area 51. Okay. Yeah. And, um, Jumped over to Mammoth Lakes, and then we crossed the Sierras over Sonora Pass into San Francisco, hit the coast from there, rode all the way up the coast until uh, we got pushed inland uh, midway up Oregon coast. Okay. And um, <clears throat> got pushed inland for some bad weather, you know? Yeah. And then so we, we rode the, I believe it's the Columbia River that s splits uh, Oregon and Washington okay. and jumped over. Um, went north from there and uh, crossed over into um, Idaho okay. at Post Falls. They want to go there. And for a yeah, time. yeah, it's a beautiful area, man. Northern Idaho is uh, spectacular. Probably some of the best riding I've ever done. Okay. Um, we crossed, you know, we kind of zigzagged from Montana back into Idaho. We went to Missoula <clears throat> and just kind of. I think I can't remember if it's Highway 12 or Highway 14, whatever. It's okay. It's amazing. If you've never done it, it's it's like I said, hands down the best road I've ever rode. Okay. Um, even though it was raining, even though it was forty degrees, <laughs> it was it was amazing. I mean, if you if you enjoy road in those conditions, it's a yeah. good road. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like we, I stopped in one town. I was the only idiot that didn't have a rain suit, so <laughs> stopped in a town and dried all my clothes. And while they was eating lunch, and and just jumped back on it and kept going, man. And we rode all the way down to uh, Boise. Okay. And you know, that's where we split off with other guys and just started heading home, you know. Yeah, y'all did a uh, 92 above, like, uh, Black Hand of the Gunson, too, right? Yeah, yeah. On the back. That's yeah. one of my, I don't know, that's definitely yeah. one of my, like, top like five the roads. Like Grand whatever. Mesa down to yeah. Gunnison. Yeah, that yeah. was a really cool road, too, man. Yeah, so that's yeah. probably, a third of that trip is probably most people's, like, normal trip or whatever. How, yeah. many, how many miles did you wind up with? We ended up... Um, Everybody kind of had a little bit different on their speedometer when, or odometer yeah, when we yeah. got when we got home, but mine was right around fifty seven hundred. Okay, so so a lot. Yeah, it, all, was, it was a lot, and we was gone thing, for right? uh, sixteen days. Sixteen days. Yeah, all on this thing. Yep. And you guys, you guys do trips pretty normal. I know, like your IG feed is full <clears> of like just like trip photos. And stuff, yeah. Right? So this was our fourth year in a row to do a two week trip. Uh, we started in nineteen. Uh, this, this, Kind of the reason I bought this bike okay. was, you know, for the big trip, you know, not to have any worries about, you know, all the problems that come along with big wheels and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. So, but yeah, um, definitely been a trooper, man. Um, I mean, sitting around 43,000 miles on the bike right now. That's a lot. In, uh, since 2019. Yeah, so that's, that's moving. You know, and, and it's four, four pretty much 5,000 mile trips, you know, one each year since, uh, since 19 when, it's been coast to coast twice. So how much, um, I guess you, you pretty much hit every part of the country, right? Have you done like all 50 states yet? Or like? Well, I'm, we're close, man. And, and the cool thing about it is we're close to hitting it with, uh, with a group, you know, not yeah. just myself or somebody else. It's, uh, I think we have a handful of Midwest states, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, okay. some of those little states that you, you got to want to go to, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, a handful of states, I think we're going to probably 
maybe push to do that at the end of this year okay, or, the, or even next year. You get the hometown rally. You're yeah. right there. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. kind of what I'm trying to push the guys to do, but some of the guys have uh, used up a lot of their vacation already. So understandable. Yeah, it's a commitment know. to do trips like that. Like I just, I've done usually just like five or six day trips. If you're going like half a month, you that's a legit like right time commitment. You've got to plan. Yeah, I mean that's, get that's work most and, people's whole time. You know, yeah, whole time 100%. off. You know, most people. You know, I guess average probably like two weeks or yeah, something. Something so, like that. So you know, they're, they're burning it all up in, in in one big trip. You know, so everything else the rest of year is kind of weekend stuff or whatever. But. Yeah, I think we'll eventually probably knock it out next year, and it'll be all lower 48 states with a group of eight. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that's impressive. I think I ride a lot, but I think I'm still, a, I'm like mid-30s on the states. And yeah. like I definitely haven't, like my trips are usually like six days. I'll get like 3,000 to 3,500 yeah. miles, nothing like yeah, almost 6K and stuff. It, it's, so. it's a commitment, man, to do to do 14 days on the road, you know. I mean, you got you to gotta really want it and... You got to have a job that lets you too, you know. So, yeah, you got to have that flexibility. Yeah, you got to have flexibility, and and most of us are, you know, in our thirties or late thirties or whatever, and and I think we've we've earned that time with our companies or whatever, yeah. so they kind of work put, with us. And you put yourself in a position where you yeah, can do that. Yeah, exactly, sound. exactly. So we got a solid group. How does that work? Like sixteen days on the road, like because I've done. We did the trip last year that was we were out for eleven or twelve days. Um, and towards the end of it, like, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to be home. So how does that usually and, work? You kind of like, is it usually hit that point and you're just ready to be back or do you kind of hit that and then kind of like power through? Keep yeah, going, it's or? kind of, uh, I always say it, it's like, uh, about midway through the trip, you know, you get that or, or when you get to that furthest point, like mm -hmm. when we hit Washington and we're, we're turning to, you know, we're coming, we're headed home now, you know, yeah. I always say that's kind of the point where it hits me. It's either like, you know, you're you're either still stoked to like be on the road or it kind of bums you out a little bit that you're heading home, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, and then sometimes you're also missing home, you know, like you're ready to be home. So it's, it's kind of, everybody, everybody takes it's it a little, little different. different, you know, yeah. but that's kind of my thing about it. Like once you're halfway, like, I feel like it kind of, your mindset kind of changes. Like you start thinking about work again, like that first oh, week, you're, yeah. you know, you're not thinking about work. You're not thinking about nothing. You're just having a good time. Like, and then you start thinking about I'm all those responsibilities. Check back you into got. reality a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Exactly. Cool, man. So you mentioned you got this bike solely for trips. You came off the big wheel. Thing, yes. Right? Yeah. I had a big wheel uh, <clears throat> that I built in 2018, and that was my only bike for uh, for a while. Uh, and luckily, I uh, found a great group group of di group of guys <laughs> uh, pretty quickly. You know, from the, the from the Fast Life campout, and um, so I rode the big wheel there uh, the first year and uh, I believe it was uh, September okay. is when they had it then. And, um, you know, kind of kind of changed my perspective on some things, you mm -hmm. know, as far as what kind of bike I wanted and just different styles and all that stuff, yeah. you know, because out here it's not really a diverse crowd, you yeah, know, it's a lot yeah. of hell yeah brothers and, and, and club stuff, you know. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so the next year we, we all became pretty good friends. I, uh, uh, so we planned that 2019 mm -hmm. trip in uh, June to uh, California and uh, we was going to the West Coast. And so I decided to get this bike and uh, dial it in. You know, I did, it, it, it didn't have paint then, but uh, you know, just we did the basics. You know, put the the Memphis shades on it, mm -hmm. put the Saddleman uh, tuck and roll seat on it, uh, Bassani exhaust, and um, so, you know, just risers and bars. Yeah, get like yeah, getting it set up for like a purpose. Yeah, just, actually yeah. knock out the miles, which yeah. you're obviously doing. So, um, I guess you mentioned the Fast Life camp out. Like one of the first things that jumps out on the bike, obviously, is the paint. This is a uh, Jay's paint job, correct? Yeah. It's Jay's from Fast Life Garage. Uh, we've become real good friends. Yeah, he knocked it out um, after after that 2019 trip. Okay. Came back home and tore it all down and and went full blown with it. You know. How's that work with? The, did you kind of have like a like colors in mind or like a scheme in mind, or did you yeah. just give it to him and let him run with it, or how'd that work? I pretty much gave him colors and let him run with it. You know, okay. I, you know, I liked his style. You know, I like how he he flo he puts everything together. It flows well. So I just kind of gave him like three colors and told him to run with it. You know. Yeah, it turns out great. All ties in 
like really well, like you're crawling yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. So, um, like you, you did suspension all the way around too, correct? Yeah. So it's uh, Nix 22 Olin's in the front with two inch over Dyna tubes, mm -hmm. and then the uh, mono Olin shock in the rear. Um, it's I think it's an inch or inch and a half over. Okay. In the yeah. rear, so the rear it up sets up a little well. bit. Yep. So did you were was that were you old ones all the way right off the bat or yeah I was kind of sold I mean um, you know I, there was a few people that had it at that time mm -hmm. and um, and they talked real well about it and I don't think at that time Legends made anything for the soft tails because yeah. they were like pretty new yep you know so Olin's was our options you know so I just I went full Olin's and it performs great yeah I'm interested to it. see how. The Dyna we have has like legends on it, which are which are great. They're a huge improvement over stock. But yeah. with the bagger we went with, well, GP and then Olin's in the rear, like kind of like that next level. So right, I'm right. Interested to see, see how it goes. Um, and then you mentioned, I guess you're kind of like obviously with trip. One big part of tripping is like obviously the whole ergonomic setup with your seat and bars and risers. Like right. Walk us through like what you've got for your bar and riser setup. Yeah, so I got the 10-inch uh, uh, Boosted Brad Death Metal Racing risers uh, with the Fly Moto bars. Um, you got the pullbacks as well, right? Yeah, 10-inch pullbacks. So I believe it's 10-inch rise, 2-inch pullback. Yeah, and then you got the bars, probably, what, about a 1 or so, 1 or 2? <laughs> is, yeah. is that the low-rise Fly Moto Yeah, bar? there's a low-rise. So, yeah, it's probably, it's probably around a 12-inch tall setup, you know, okay. after, after bars and everything. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, it, it works great for me, you know. Um, like I said, just threw some of the basics on it. Um, you know, bunk king bars. Um, Crash bars. Yeah. So, and you've got, you're running you Lindell rotors, front yep. and rear as well, right? Lindell rotors, front and rear. Um, you know, got the pads and everything. Boosted brad pegs, uh, brake arm. So... What uh what what this is so MA Soft Tales, let's start out with the one oh three or what was it? One oh seven. One oh seven? Okay. Yeah. And what all have you done? Obviously you've got the Basani on there. What all have you done right. for like internals of the motor? Internals, man, it's pretty basic really. Um I got the S and S four seventy five cam. Okay. Yeah. Just got the uh, you know, of course adjustable push rods, tappets, or whatever. Uh got the Arlen S intake. And a Thunder Max Auto Tuner to okay. go with all Got that. The Thunder Max so, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm running that on mine as well. Yeah, pretty, pretty works great about that. So, I guess obviously you you just done like some solid stuff to like wake the motor and stuff up versus right. like going full right. on. Is that solely because your main goal is like with the tripping and yeah, like main, mainly to keep it more reliable. You know, uh, putting miles on them every year. You know, don't want a lot of failures on the road. Yeah, so <laughs> that's my main goal. Yeah, <clears> hundred percent. <throat> that's mine. I just like want to wake it up because when you're doing I mean, just my trips like are small compared to yours. But the last mm -hmm. thing you want to worry be worried about is like something going wrong. Right. Right. Yeah, I've been very fortunate. Um, never had an issue. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. but she's getting up there in miles. So, yeah, forty three. Is that what you said? Yeah, forty three thousand. So, <laughs> so you got are these are the stock wheels that you've had powder coated. Yeah, so those are pretty much the nine-spoke stock wheels that come on the uh, soft tails or, or the earlier ones. Um, yeah, I just took them off, took them down to a local powder coat shop. They they just they just called it like a candy red. Mm -hmm. And actually, when Jace painted the bike, he kind of gave me some paint cards. Okay. And so I took it to my powder coat guy and just said, "You try to match it the best yeah. you can." I, I think was about it, to ask because it looks pretty. It turned out pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, turned out great. And then you've had your, you painted your lowers as well, correct? Powder, I powdered those as well. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, off those paint cards he gave me just to try to match, you know, this gray in here. And uh, turned out well. Cool. I got a question for you on, on the back. So those are like the stock bags, right? No. Or, no so, did you buy those from? So yeah, these are, <clears throat> these actually come off the Sport Glide. Yeah, Sport Glide. And uh, so but I bought- they're Harley bags. Yeah. yeah, they're straight from Harley, you know, come directly off the Sport Glide. They mount right up on the on the low riders. They you know they work on the fat bobs. How um, do you like the like the whole like how it clamshell opens? Do you like that? Like, um, <clears throat> it's it's different. It I I think personally that there's 
a little bit more room in these than there is like a bagger okay lid. all right you know if you don't have the extended yeah, ones yeah, of course yeah. you know but to me personally like i i can i usually do a lot of the guys make fun of me or whatever but i usually do the 14 day trips with just this i don't okay. have a pack out i have nothing i put a backpack behind the fairing and i just use my bag you get all your stuff in those and bags? i get all nice. my stuff in there yeah i've always like i've never had any experience with those i just have like the the standard like top top lid bags with right, a bag or whatever right. now so i've always wondered how much you're able to get in there compared to like yeah. the bagger one so yeah and i uh you know a lot of people probably know but this right one is a little bit shorter mm -hmm. than the left one because of the exhaust and stuff but it works out well and then you mentioned uh the memphis shades fairing so. yeah it's a just a memphis shades road warrior fairing uh 15 inch shield okay. Uh, the dark smoke or whatever. Yeah. Did um, you? Because uh, yours, this isn't a Benin one. Did you ever like go Benin or consider going Benin? I've never tried it. Um, I just um, had. I had a. I think the previous interview, uh, probably the previous interview. I guess the guy had the Benin one. Yeah. I think his was 15 as well. Yeah. He had a Benin one. He said yeah. it helped with like some of the buffeting on his helmet and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. I, I've I've been offered. Uh, I got a friend that that has one, and he offered to let me try. I just haven't done it yet, but I have heard it helps with the buffeting. Okay. You know, but yeah, let me know because I'm. I'm interested. I think we're going to put a Rogue Warrior on the Dyna here soon. Yeah. So I'm interested to, yeah. to hear how that goes. So Yeah, and we're we're probably close to the same height. So that that 15 inch shield, it it works great for me. Cool. Yeah. We'll check it out. So yeah, so let's walk through that. So like your your pegs, walk us through those. So those are yeah, pretty much uh, same uh, was as my risers, the boosted Brad, uh, death metal racing pegs, and a uh, brake arm. It's okay. kind of got the same design as the yep. risers. Um, <clears throat> and then he mentioned like crash bars. I think you mentioned those were bunking. Is that bunking, right? front, and rear? front and rear. Yeah, front crash bar, and then the, the rear sliders. Okay. And so, um, have you upgraded any of your your light in the rear, or I think you've got different lights up here in your blinkers? Yeah, as well. this is a uh, uh, all of the custom dynamics uh, license plate frame and um, rear brake light. Okay. So, and then you are these upgraded blinkers as well. Those, those, those are, still they're, stock? they're actually just the, uh, they're still the bullet turn signals, but they got the LED, uh, okay, the LED insert, is, custom yeah, dynamic yeah. inserts. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Just kind of stuck with a lot of the same brands, you know, running all, oh. all, all their stuff, you know. Yeah, that uh, makes sense, especially with lighting. So it all like, right. kinda, like yeah. goes together versus having to look, yeah. look on the front. Somebody's brake light might be way brighter than the yeah. other person's or, or something. So just trying to keep it all. And this is, still a, this is still a Harley headlight, right? It is, it is. So have you actually, considered going to one of those like bright ass fucking like- I actually have one of the like, LP6 brackets on yeah. order. I just don't have it in yet. <laughs> okay, so just waiting? Yeah. So those yeah. things are they're bright, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm riding with some of the road glides that have them and- Oh, when they have two of them? You don't want them riding behind you. <laughs> when you have two of them, yeah, it's- uh, Yeah. We were doing that going into Phoenix. Yeah. Like, Justin had like two LP6s. I had those two ridges. Right. And like- if he was close enough in my mirror, I had no idea like what was going yeah. on. It was just so bright. And exactly. then like the two of them combined, like they're crazy bright. Yeah, it's brutal. So I feel a little bit like an asshole doing it, but yeah. At least they see me. So Yeah, exactly. Or something like that. They ain't gonna run you over. Yeah, right. <laughs> so cool, man. Well, if anybody has questions for you and your bike or just anything in general, what's the best way for people to like reach uh, out to you? Yeah, man, just uh Big Wheel Cody B on Instagram. Uh, Are you gonna change that? Uh, eventually. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. I'm to get that thing sold, and then we'll <laughs> there we we'll go. talk about names. <laughs> or is that how people know you now? So you're just stuck I guess with so. It. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of stuck. Uh, I think Jace gave me that <laughs> several years ago, but <laughs> it's just kind of stuck. Oh, there you and, go. But yeah, for I mean, first two years there, that that's all I rode everywhere, you know, and I put I put plenty of miles on that thing too. Yeah. And uh Yeah, because I've seen you got pictures of that at like at Sturgis and like Devil's Tower mm -hmm. and showing your page and yep. stuff too, right? Yep. Yep. It's been so I had to go from riding a big little bagger on long trips and thing to having a, this has got a mid forward kind of uh hand foot control system. Right, right. So how do you feel different from riding like the baggers with they're kind of forward forward but right. set up so how does the uh, ergonomics on that work differently for you? Well, that's what, honestly, when you go ride one day today like, on the bike night on a big wheel and you hop on the next night to ride this, yeah, it, it, like riding the same thing. Yeah, it's totally different. Yeah, you're stretched out more. You're not <laughs> you're not as you know got good as posture on the bike as, as you do like on the on the big wheel. You're all stretched out. But um, uh, you know that's that's one of the reasons I don't ride that bike much more. You know, it's just because I love this bike so much. It rides so well. It's set up for what it, you do. It's set up for what I like to do. So and. 
obviously you've done some serious trips on that 5700 miles what's the longest trip you did on your big wheel um in a day or like total just, just in yeah in a total, in total trip. um it was to uh uh panama city florida so it's like 750 stretch one day okay but uh you know there and back you know 15 1600 miles whatever okay, so you're still yeah. even tripping on that yeah so. i was tripping on that before you know i got this but something that made sense <laughs> yeah 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 this is way more comfortable yeah i imagine <laughs> cool man well i appreciate you coming out and sweating yeah, your balls off in here thanks um, for having me man if this guy would get some ac would be doing a lot <laughs> next better time. <laughs> next time i got the unit in the wiring just need the duct work yeah he'll have better next time He'll have a setup next time. Yeah. Cool. Maybe I'll, a little better. I'll put all his shit down in the description stuff. If you guys got any questions for him, uh, check out the site, Patreon, whatever. Yeah. Uh, next time. Next time. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool difference of the bagger or the bag. Yeah. Because all the bagger, not only is it the height difference. It Yeah, well, and, and like I said, it's hard to, you know, a lot of those guys you interview and stuff, you got big, badass motors. They can talk about all the internals and stuff. I'm like, ah, don't there. really have that, but. But you're putting 5,700 miles on Yeah, exactly, days, so, exactly. Which is really what it, yeah, it's yeah. about. That's, I don't know, I care more about. But that's one of the big reasons, like, this paint, I love this fucking paint, but, like, yeah. if I did a paint, I wouldn't enjoy riding it on long trips because something like this would happen and just, like, fucking ruin my day. Yeah. Just, like... Oh, when it first happened, it ruined my day, but I was like... Oh, <laughs> the reason my bike is really not the same color it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Because I, yeah. I had it, and I rode it so many times on the trips. It, had, it was to the point that no one else could tell it, but it was for me, and I was like, I just can't deal with the road chips anymore. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're... I didn't want to wash it. Your forks have held up well. Yeah. Dude, uh, yeah, that's, our, that's our, original coating, you know, and they... I mean, they got some chips. I mean, but there, still, like, like my... Yeah. Uh, it was dying the black ones because I did all my trips, all my trips except for the born free trip have been on that thing. And her her things they do like shit. Really? It's just like it's just like rock things like the yeah. whole way up. Like um, I don't know if it's the color that just hides it a little better or what, but yeah, they they held up well. What's the first year of the bottle? Eighteen. Like Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. It's the nineteen. <clears throat> yeah. Because yeah. And the only the S has the dual. Like yeah. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a regular. Have you thought about doing that at all? Not really. I, I honestly I like the look of the open wheel, you know, like yeah, you on, can, on the right side. You can you see know? your wheel from yeah. one side, but that's fair. It's funny how many how many people hated these bikes when they came out. Oh, dude, dude well, like a bunch of people hated them. I do, I feel like the MX soft tails are just now growing on me. Yeah, like I was never like a huge fan of them when they come out. I still think the dyes look better, but they definitely like yeah. ride better and stuff. But I think when you see the look of I think the look of a dyno with the out, you know the shocks yeah. on the outside, I think it looks better yeah. too. Well, he's just starting to like grow me light with like. Like your bike, like I just did like Scott's wheel skills, like yeah. Tommy's, like the G yeah. bike. Yeah. And there are a couple other guys, like when you actually get them set up, they they look pretty awesome too. So. You have any future plans? What are you going to do? Are you going to kind of just ride it? Dude, honestly, I'm going to let this one ride. Yeah. And I, I need to sell the big wheel this year and then buy another bike and start building it. And then I don't know if I'll keep it or sell this one too, you know? And you're like me on bikes. Yeah. <laughs> I always say I'm gonna sell one to build my next one, and the reason why I, never I built my next one is because I can't get some. I, I put my dyno yeah. for sale probably three times and had probably three or four potential actual buyers that wanted to pay for it. Yeah, and each time I find reasons not to do it. Is your primary and everything or clutch and all? Is that still the that's, that's still all stock, stock? Still yeah. stock? Yep. Yep. It's just cam and. I mean, I think this is getting more toward the. Uh, just now, since I recently moved here, getting more toward the, I'm gonna call it the south to the east, doing like moving from California out here. Like California is bombarded with bikes like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gradually getting over that people understand what you're riding and kind of getting oh, into yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just some legit riders out here. It'll take forever for it to get fully this way where people were like. They want that style, you know. You think that's based off the shops that are out here? Like they're kind of geared towards. There's not a lot of shops that are out here. There's like you got Harley Davidson dealerships, and you have yeah, like a few. Like obviously, you got. I met Justin and Hang 'em High. Yeah, so yeah. Few of them. And he's really, of course I he's kind of more of a chopper dude too, you know. Yeah. Like, like that's good. That's good. I think that's my original thing when I came out here. I was going. I needed somebody to work on my bike. That's yeah. how I met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's not a lot of guys. I don't want didn't want to necessarily give my money. Yeah. 
the Harley Davidson. There's no good. shops around here that yeah. I would I would trust at all, and that's why mainly I work on my own shit. But you know, I, we, I attempt to try to, yeah. and I do a lot of it. We do a lot more than normal, or a lot more than we probably should. Working yeah, on our own bike. yeah, yeah. But it gets in that time. Like I get a point in time. Like I get off work. I start working on my bike, and after a month right. of it being down, with me trying to find the time to work on, I get so mad at the time frame in my you ready for to it. hurry it up. I just like you know what? Here's the farce. Or like Put seven, you know? Yeah. Say what? Or like seven months. Well, you yeah. had a long time. I think well, that was it, my, it took me. That was my fault. That was like we started before we had all our parts, and then of course the parts got in like six months too late, or right, six months right. later than they're supposed to. And I think you're a little lucky. It took us, for me to build the FXR, I think I have an 18 month build for the FXR waiting on parts Jesus. and stuff to come in. And for the Dyna, I built the Dyna. I didn't say I'm, I'm not a, the first guy to build the Dyna by any means, but I built the Dyna right as the scene was going big with all a lot of the big stuff. Right. And waiting on the parts because some of the companies were still R and D and stuff. Right. And right. I was like having to wait on swing arms to get there or yeah. pieces still, for pipes. But you were still riding. It. And I was still trying to actually ride it at the mm -hmm. same time. Made it. It didn't make it terrible. Yeah, that's the worst part of. That's the reason why I like having the two bikes. Right. I got a question for you. So you got the gripper, the yep. gripper material on the back. Do you like that? Because I've heard, I've heard some people say like it's great. Like if you're stunting and stuff to hold you in, but like right. if you're just like doing normal riding, it like sticks to you and grabs clothing and stuff. Do you uh, like it or indifferent not, about it or? It doesn't. It doesn't grab me or anything. Uh, as far as like you know, like pulling my shirt. Not like or that, but like you just like yeah. more. It's like a comfortable yeah, nuisance know. kind of deal. No, I don't get any okay uncomfortability out of it. Uh, I think for mine is the sitting part. Right. Because when you're right here, like you can move your shift your weight a little bit on slick, especially on long rides. Right. Rides gripper all the way. Oh, it is and on the bottom too. Yeah, it's on the bottom. Yeah. So when I actually my ass will be here, raw. <laughs> well, it doesn't actually do the rawness. It's just like when you're wanting to adjust your butt over. Right. Your butt adjusts, but your pants and yes. stuff just stick to it. And then it's sitting there like rubbing it's your like, ass. Like, What's yeah. going on here? Something ain't moving yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the worst parts about long trips is like, you know, you're riding and your legs and your ass get a little sweaty and like you're just kind of moving on. You're, you don't feel like you're moving much on the seat all day, but you are. Yeah. And then like at the yeah. end of the day, you're like, fuck, where's the baby powder? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I will admit, I got, we, I got the KTM. We got the KTMs and we thought when we first started riding them around for the couple hundred miles test drives, we were like, oh, the KTMs, why not Harley? But there's a much better design, a much better long distance ride. Mm -hmm. And until you actually do a long distance ride on one, actually, so and I was like, I don't know. About my, this it was better. Me. It was better on like my. I could sit in that seat for like two hundred thirty miles, like easy, because that tank would go that far on the twelve ninety. So this, the actual my ass in the seat was actually way better. But like the position of like my legs and everything, really, that's what came my like hamstrings and my calves. Like, do you have the same one? I did twelve ninety, so it's just it's a little bit just bigger a, than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of the same feet position. Yeah. Yeah. Set up, it's just a picture yeah. of that blade. So my legs were like size, man. my legs crying. would start cramping in yeah. the day. My ass was yeah. fine. So it was like it was, it was weird. It did make me realize this, and I hope anyone that ever follows me understands this. Any person that thinks they want an adventure bike and think adventure bikes are the cool thing to do, and we didn't grow up riding dirt bikes. So right. This is a default to us. We didn't end up riding dirt. This is our first dirt bike. I had the twelve ninety, then I got the eight ninety because I'm too small. Anyone that thinks they want to adventure bike, my, my advice pocket, is to okay. go rent one for a week and not just ride around town and do a long ride on it. Yeah. Because yeah. as you think, there's more off roads. We bought it, then we're going to do it. We had to plan our trip to do all these off road videos, yeah. all this amazing well, stuff. 90% of our ride, I wish I was on a road on, bike. Yeah, yeah. Like I was so, like, I could have, I would have much rather bought a KTM like 500 EXE or something and hold it in a truck somewhere and did like some back roads adventure that way so that was a, that was, that's i think that's part of the trip thing because when i was at home in nashville I had a buddy i'd follow around and we would do like stupid like single track shit he was like a little tanneray and like i couldn't keep up with him but i can do all this stuff on the 1290 yeah. even though i didn't have like really any dirt bike experience but when you get on a trip like we left like he said he came to nashville we left nashville yeah. you're up in freaking wyoming and you're like 13 miles down this like random like yeah a like, dirt road slash like double track or whatever it you want to call so it long, though. and while you're out there and then like if you're out, if you mess up out there, like if you mess up on a Harley, you're just on the side of the road, like fucking hitchhiking or right. trying to like call a tow truck yeah. or something. You get in the middle of nowhere and break your leg or something. Yeah, you're, you're just like, there. You're like, fucked. Yeah. So. In some of the places we were at, we didn't do a slower service. And like I said earlier, we're not experienced dirt bike riders. So you add all that weight on the back of it and you're yeah. trying to get fit photos of going in and out of ditches, trying to yeah. jump a bike that weighs 500 times more yeah. than a dirt bike. I was like, yeah, my butt should probably go back to a Harley. I don't know what I'm and, doing. Yeah, and like the. I mean, the people that do, that do the long off-road trips on those type of bikes, they have to take 
months off because yeah. it takes so long to go 200 miles off road. But some of them ride yeah. them like they're like bicycles. Like there's a couple of guys we follow. I, I remember name Chris Birch and it's like, I think that's right, Aaron. Those guys aren't like They that. are like legit, like yeah, they make them look like they're little bicycles. Yeah, but they're not. No, they're excellent riders. They're I'm not, not doing hard. trips like we were. They were like freaking like four days away from where they live. They're yeah. just going out with like nothing and like treat. And those guys are there's like professional riders. Right. Like, that's right. a different level. So yeah. like I'm not gonna pretend to like even be close to that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Look at addictions. I think the salt tells a little bit great. I'll roll it out there for some photos. Great platform. It is. I love it, man. Like <laughs> I don't know. Should be doing some cool stuff with them now though. Yeah. I'm 